price of petrol has a great effect on the world. As the price of oil rises, so does the cost of goods and services. Due to these two economic factors, domestic tourism has started to decrease in the Otwe region. Businesses in Apollo Bay which rely on the tourist trade may be forced to close in the not too distant future. My aim for this project was to create a transport solution that had a minimal to no reliance on oil to operate. This led me to looking at a fuel which could be manufactured virtually for free. To produce this fuel, you would only need two elements, wind and water. And where do you find these at abundance? The coast. So I decided to create a ferry called the H2, which as its name suggests, runs off a fuel cell fueled by hydrogen. The use of water transport for goods as well as tourists and residents could be a viable solution to ease pressure on the Great Ocean Road. Now some people are a little uneasy about the use of hydrogen as a fuel because of this. Hydrogen is no more flammable than natural gas, it just needs to be treated with respect. Now here's how to make it for free. The first thing you'll need is electricity created by a wind turbine. The second thing you'll need is seawater. The seawater gets purified then has electricity passed through it to release the hydrogen gas. This process is called electrolysis. The hydrogen is then compressed and fed into storage tanks where it is used to refuel ferries which run off a hydrogen fuel cell to create electricity which then power electric motors. This diagram depicts how different stakeholders will use and also benefit from the ferry service. The public sector as tourists can use the H2 ferry's environmentally friendly and cost effective way of getting to Apollo Bay. The tourist will then inject money into Apollo Bay which will benefit the community. Locals can also use the ferry as a form of commuting to Melbourne without a car. This will help to ease the pressure on the Great Ocean Road. Wind is a key element of this service. It is needed to produce hydrogen to fuel the ferries. But also, when not in use, the turbine can supply the locals with clean electricity. Producers will benefit greatly from the ferry service. They will have their produce packed and then placed onto a ferry. The ferry will then only take a few short hours to arrive in the heart of Melbourne. From here, retailers will then sell it onto consumers. The consumers will then be supporting the farmers, who will also be supporting the local community. Instead of goods being transported by trucks, they could be transported using the ferry. This would ease pressure on the road networks as well as the Great Ocean Road and also lower prices at the grocers. The H2 ferry will offer a totally unique service to passengers. Being able to relax as soon as you board at the docklands and powering straight out of the bay rather than stressing out in traffic. Passengers will be able to get off at a number of stops all the way to Warrnambool and be able to get closer to some of the coast's most famous attractions without leaving the boat. In the not too distant future, petroleum based transport will be too expensive for most to use. With an estimated trip cost in 2050 of over $500, the H2 ferry could be the answer. <laughs>